But as I said, my primary focus since 2003 has been single family houses. So why apartments? You know, single family homes scared me. My background was in business and in, in, in practicing law. Um, my wife has her MBA. We're doing this together. When we started looking at getting into the fix and flip in the single family home business, especially where we live, we're in Duxbury, Massachusetts. I mean, the average home price was about six hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know, we hear these stories about people putting homes on their credit cards. You can't do that in, in my area, which meant that if you made a mistake on a single family, you made a mistake that could cost you a lot of money. And we were not, it was easier for us to read a financial statement than it was to go out and do a, a um, you know, a, a, a BPO on a single family home. And so we were always more geared towards multifamily because as I teach my students, multifamily is not about owning property. It's about running a business. And when you're in the multifamily arena, the property is secondary to the actual business that you're buying. And that's really the way I teach my students. You've got to look at this as, as a business. You're, you're becoming a business owner uh, the same way you would if you uh, purchase a franchise. But the multifamily business is the greatest business in the world to be in. Um, but that's why we focus more on multifamily right right away. We, we dipped our toe into the single family. It just wasn't for us. How many doors uh, do you have now? And tell, tell my audience the definition of a door. Okay, so we call doors, um, you know, other people call them keys. Um, doors are the number of units, apartment units that you have. At the, at the height, I had about 1,200. I'm in the process of selling my last one and, and, uh, and, and hoarding my cash because, Jay, as you know, what happened back in 2008, I was on the wrong side of it. Uh, I'm not going to let that happen again. And I'm watching the tea leaves and seeing where this market's headed right now. And uh, right now I'm waiting for these, these, the wave of multifamily foreclosures to start to come on board. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. I, I purchased a, a 222 unit apartment complex back in 19, 2008. I purchased it one month before Fannie and Freddie went bankrupt. And it was about seven and a half million dollars. And man, this thing was was absolutely great. Market changed the next month. We held on to that thing as long as we could. You know, about five years, uh, the term came due, and you know, the markets that cr had crashed. We we had to give it back to the bank. Uh, so we bought it seven and a half, non recourse loan. Dropped the keys on the bank's desk and walked away from it. And that was because of the, the crash in the market. About six months ago, I was on a TV, uh, not a TV show, but a, uh, a, 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 a an on internet show called uh, Multifamily Shark Pool, where I was one of the sharks and people would come and pitch their deals. And this guy gets on there and he says he's buying property in Lexington, Kentucky. He owns property there. He loves it. And he starts putting up pictures of his portfolio in Lexington, Kentucky. And Jay... I couldn't believe it. He owns that property that I gave back to the bank. So as I'm on the call with the guy, I jump over to my laptop, I pull up CoStar, and I can see the history of that property. I never looked at it before. And this guy is telling me why his deal is good because the market's not going to change. And if it changes, it's only going to change a little bit. And I said, listen, pal, you can't tell me that because... Back in 2008, I purchased a 222 unit property in Lexington, Kentucky, and you see his eyes get big and he knows, he knows he owns my property. And I gave him the history. I bought it for seven and a half. It went back to the bank. The bank sold it to somebody for $3 million. And then this guy bought it from the bank, bought it from that guy for $7 million. That guy made $4 million just by getting in the way. And he walked away with all of my profit. And I thought, man, that's what's coming up. That's going to start happening again. And I'm going to be on the right side of it this time.